how do you go from Marine Corps now to Stanford? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, uh, I had this incredible experience in the Marine Corps and, and talk about being in an environment where, you know, you have the opportunity to learn what it means to be part of a great team. And, and as you know, one of the gifts of the Marine Corps for me was there's very few places will give you the opportunity to lead uh, at age 21 or 22. And so I had this incredible experience served with amazing men and women. Um, I'd gotten back from overseas, did a couple overseas deployment, got back from Iraq in 2003 had loved it, but was ready for kind of the next uh, phase in my, in my life, in my career. Um, problem was I had absolutely no idea what that looked like. I'd spent the last 10 years between Naval Academy and, and the Marine Corps on a active duty. I was an infantry officer. It wasn't particularly obvious to me, you know, how those mm-hmm. skills would translate. Uh, and so decided, you know, I think maybe I'd, I'd like to do something in business. I'd studied computer engineering at the Naval Academy. So I was interested in technology and thought, well, Maybe going back to grad school will give me a good opportunity to, to, one, both learn what's out there and what's possible and how my skills might translate uh, and get a, a basic foundation of business that I can apply in this next phase. So that led me to Stanford. Uh-huh. It, it, just kind of off the first like surface-level glance, glan- it seems like a very big departure from, other, from what you did previously. East Coast, you know, even the Naval Academies, what, Maryland and Na- Annapolis, right? right? Um, and you're on the military side, and then suddenly you go to California in the heart of Silicon Valley in this tech school that's, you know, kind of the other side of the country. And w- what was that decision process like, or was it something that just felt right off the beginning? You know, it's, it's um, when I went to the Naval Academy, to that choice, um, one of the things that, that I think is really amazing about the Naval Academy and the military in general is, to some degree, part of that experience, you're forced to experience all these things in your life you may not opt into. So mm-hmm. visiting parts of the world, getting exposed to different types of people. So while I was at the Naval Academy, got a chance to spend some time in San Diego on deployment, um, traveled a bunch around the country, got stationed initially at Camp Pendleton. Um, and, you know, I was 22, 23 years old. San Diego is not a terrible place. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That age. You know, and for me, there were no bugs. The weather was incredible. I was like, this is pretty <laughs> amazing. Why doesn't everyone live here? Um, and, you know, for me, it was at that age, I was just really excited to experience different things. Mm. And so different places to live, different types of roles, uh, and kind of fell in love with the West Coast at that point. Yeah. You go from a military environment, and then you get into a tech business environment. <laughs> My brother's in tech, so I know a little, I mean, I, I, I hear stories about what kind of environment that is. Yep. How did you make the adjustment from a you know, very regimented military life to a business that to me seems like it's a lot more free form and just kind of hang loose sometimes. Uh, for sure. You know, it's funny. I, uh, so, so my first job, uh, outside of the Marine Corps, uh, was an internship at Google. Okay. And if you can imagine a corporate culture that is more different from the Marine Corps being an infantry officer than Google, I, I'd be hard pressed to identify it. And I remember showing up there the first day and I didn't know what, what, how mm-hmm. to dress or how to speak. So I was in a suit, which I just looked completely ridiculous. <laughs> like, who is this guy? Are the auditors coming in? Like what mm-hmm. happened? And, uh, you know, the, the person I went there to meet was like, take off the tie immediately mm-hmm. and the coat. And then we walked around the corporate campus and I was like, where am I? <laughs> like this, this is like a theme park. Uh, and what I'll say actually was really, really interesting. There were things about the Marine Corps that I loved. You know, the Marine Corps is this incredible institution but it's also a really big, large bureaucracy. It's mm-hmm. 200 and something thousand people. Mm-hmm. It has to operate that way. And there are elements of that experience to me that um, you know, I was a little frustrated by, to be candid. And I was looking in the next phase of my career for an environment that uh, challenged the status quo, that embraced innovation, uh, that created a real a kind of culturally, a real meritocracy, where if you worked really hard and you performed, you could to some degree chart your own path. And Google was all of those things. And so when I showed up there, I was very nervous because I had not worked a day outside the Marine Corps in my life. And I thought I was going to make a fool of myself. Um, But I loved it from day one. And what I learned pretty quickly was that, you know, at first blush, there wasn't a lot of commonality. Like I'm used to carrying a ruck around Mm -hmm. and a rifle and working with Marines. You know, what translates, what I learned pretty quickly actually was that all the leadership skills and experiences that I took from the time in the Marine Corps were super relevant. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, uh, people are looking for a lot of really common things in leadership. They want to be inspired. They want to be supported. They want to know that they matter, that their work matters. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to translate those experiences and skills into a very different cultural context and how I communicated and how I engaged with the team. 
but I was really kind of pleasantly surprised to see how much of it, you know, did in fact set me up well for the work that mm -hmm. I did there. What were maybe some of the road bumps in that process? Because, I mean, you go from people in fatigues to Birkenstocks in... <laughs> people yeah, sometimes in, not wearing pants. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, know, you know, I think the first thing I, I, I like to tell, tell this story, uh, I had to learn really quickly how to communicate. Um, you know, in the Marine Corps, you have this let's say very direct and very candid environment where if you're <laughs> effed up, you can tell someone you're effed up and the other person's like, you're right, I'm effed up, I'm gonna go fix it. Um, and there's a, kind of a trust there uh, that, that makes that possible. Showing up at Google saying you're effed up didn't necessarily resonate. <laughs> uh, so I, I learned pretty quickly uh, that, okay, I, I remember I had this one moment where I had someone on the team who I just started, I was a couple weeks in and, and uh, this person on the team, we had a meeting with my manager and some of the other leadership, and this person was going to present. And I asked this person, hey, do you want to sit down ahead of the meeting to just review it? And this person looked at me and was like, look, I'm good. New guy, like back off. So we get into the meeting. It's a complete train wreck, disaster. And I'm sitting there and like, I'm sure smoke is just coming out of my ears. <laughs> yep. But I'm thinking to myself, do not react the way that you would have in the Marine Corps, like dial it back. Mm -hmm. So we have this you know, meeting ends and sit down with this person and, and we talk and I have what I think is this incredibly kind of balanced and straightforward conversation. And, you know, this person walks out and I'm patting myself on the back. A couple hours later, a buddy of mine is like, what the heck did you say to so-and-so? They're talking about this Marine with PTSD who is going crazy. What? Kind of half in jest. But I learned really quickly uh, that I had to course correct. That was a really big thing for me. And I think that's mm. true of a lot of environments. Like mm. that's a big thing for me now about really understanding. You know, I've been in the CrossFit community for eight years, but there's a lot that I have to learn about how we communicate and what's important to us and what's important to the community. What was your first sort of big break in that? that environment where you, you, you got the promotion or the job where you said, okay, I'm now I'm in this, you know, it's it, probably the, 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 you know, there, there were two things I'd touch on, you know, the first was I was super lucky, um, to, to get connected at Google to another veteran, another Naval Academy grad, um, who was generous enough to spend time with me, help translate my resume to a recruiter. It's one of the challenges that veterans mm -hmm. often face. How do we communicate what we've done yeah. in a way that resonates and translates? Mm -hmm. That was a really big one for me and led to an internship, which gave me the opportunity to show that I could add value. The next big break for me was kind of fast forward two years. Uh, I got a call from a friend of mine who's working at Facebook. So this is 2008. Mm -hmm. Facebook was starting this operations team um, and needed to grow this team that would support small and medium-sized businesses. Now, keep in mind, I've got exactly like 18 months of actual experience outside the Marine Corps. I'm effectively a complete peon in the group that I'm in at Google. Uh, I am not qualified whatsoever for this job to kind of run and build this team. But for a variety of reasons, uh, I had the opportunity to come in and do this job. And, and again, ha I felt half exhilarated that I had the shot and half terrified that I was going to make a fool of myself. And, you know, was really lucky enough to go into an environment at Facebook where if you worked really hard, uh, if you were a great teammate, if you demonstrated you, you could solve problems, then you could almost take on unlimited scope. And that mm -hmm. was a huge break for me. And I made a, a million mistakes, but I tried a lot of the things that I learned in the Marine Corps around, you know, you never give up, you get it done no matter what it takes. When you make mistakes, you own up to them, you own them and you course correct and move forward. Those paid huge dividends yeah. for me. It, it sounds, uh, just hearing some of the parallels uh, you mentioned in a previous interview about you know, coming in the Marine Corps as a second lieutenant and you're the youngest, the least experienced, and you have to lead in that environment. So it seems like there was almost a natural parallel there. That's exactly right. You know, it's, it's not something I would have appreciated when I was in the Marine Corps, but um, one of the challenges there in that environment is, you know, you get rotated in the military every couple of years. And mm -hmm. when you show up in your next unit, in your next job, you're the new person. Mm -hmm. And that, that is true throughout your career. So you can be right. the, the most experienced person in the unit in terms of years, but, but uh, have the most to learn. And so getting really good at understanding, listening and learning and you know, being able to tap into the amazing folks who are around you is really important. Mm -hmm.